We're at London Stock Exchange Studios for the latest in a series of broadcast interviews with Business Worldwide magazine. Sustainable forestry is becoming an increasingly popular asset class with investors. In the continuing low interest rates environment and amid volatility in both equity and debt markets, investors are inevitably looking for new opportunities. Certainly Japan, China and India are all interested in the forestry sector as demand for timber has jumped exponentially. So how is it possible to combine investment, environmental, social and ethical concerns so everyone benefits? Well, who better than to explain this conundrum than Reno Solberg. Reno is CEO and Chairman of Better Globe Forestry. We shall be taking a more in-depth look about the group's aims, passions and success since beginning its operations in the area of sustainable forestry management in Africa and also touching on why these sustainable forestry models are now so attractive. So, Reno, welcome. Tell us a little bit more about Better Globe Forestry and what it is that makes your tree planting sustainable. The difference is that uh, most other forestry companies, they work with only one process. They plant trees, take care of them for some years, and then they sell it to the process industries. Downside is here the fluctuations in the market, for example, in the paper industry and the uh, building industry. Better Grow Forestry, we are a market-driven company and we plan to process all our, our trees into furniture, floor tiles and unique products like for example this wooden watch that I have here, which is a Better Grow watch. And we do this to avoid fluctuations. We will first and foremost export everything, we will do the marketing ourselves and we will own all the processes in a sustainable manner. Now, can you explain in more detail how the business model actually works? We have actually two business models. One works much like a crowdfunding system, uh, where people and companies can buy one tree, or they can buy thousands of trees, and they have a buyback deal, which is fixed 15 to 20 years ahead, and they get 12 times the investment back over the 20 years, starting with year five. In fact, we have done this since 2006 and it works very well. It is also called impact investments, by the way. The other model is uh, something we call Trees for Shopping. And that is an online loyalty program. People can buy things online. Uh, it can be anything from a house and a car to food, uh, clothing and, and travel. And 25% of whatever they bought will be paid back to them cash the 15th year. Simply explained is that our online business partners, they take a little percentage of whatever the customer buy and buy trees from Better Globe Forestry. And Better Globe Forestry in turn buy the trees back from their customers the 15th years, equal to approximately 25% of the, uh, whatever they have purchased. So millions of people will actually own better globe trees without even paying for them. That I think is probably the most or the best uh, customer saving program in the whole world. Now what do you perceive the risks to be associated with forestry investing in Africa, Reno? Is there anything investors should bear in mind when weighing up this type of investment? No investment is risk free. Uh, whether it's in Europe or Africa, although in Africa it's probably a, a bit more risk due to corruption among other things. However, there are also many other risks in Africa, but any risk can be mitigated if you know them. And in fact, Better Globe Forestry, we spent two years just to get to know the first tree that could produce what we wanted it to produce in 50 to 20 years before we sold any trees to anybody. And the last 11 years, we have worked to mitigate all the risks we can think of together with the Kenya Forestry Research Institute, uh, the Forestry Laboratory of Ghent in Belgium, uh, ECRAF, the World Agroforestry Center, not to mention uh, Kenya Forestry Survey, which is the government uh, in Kenya, just to mention a few. Now, why do you reject the common practice of uh, taking loans from banks and selling shares in your own company? Do you think this helps you avoid the insolvency that many African forestry companies have experienced? Well, we like to be independent and in control. That's why we reject fast-back investors, because our uh, payback is timed and planned at 15 to 20 years ahead.
And Better Grow Forestry is a totally debt-free company today and we like to keep it that way so we can plan and work in peace in order to eliminate insolvency and bankruptcy. Now, can you outline the company results so far and do you think your particular philosophy has underpinned your success? Over 13 years in what I call just a pilot project, we have planted 1.5 million trees and we have uh, see to that more than 5,000 families are out of extreme poverty and we have passed 10,000 children through school. In the years to come, we will plant 9 billion trees. We will have millions of poor farmer families out of extreme poverty and millions of children will be helped through school. We also have a microfinance system that kickstarts the poor farmers' entrepreneurial skills. And our particular philosophy with massive tree planting for business, microfinance for the poor farmers' help, and the education of children in order to fight corruption, definitely our philosophy is all it takes. As a social enterprise, Better Globe Forestry is helping in the fight, of course, to eradicate poverty in Africa. However, you've chosen education and the empowerment of rural farming communities as your goals, which is a little bit different. How are these two strategies complementing your own business model while also tackling corruption? Can you explain and expand on that a little for us? Well, let me make one statement first. Uh, nobody will ever be able to eradicate uh, poverty or corruption in Africa totally. That we haven't even done in Europe. However, we will eradicate poverty one farmer family at a time. And hopefully in some years, many farmers will be out of poverty and Africa will be a better place for poor farmers. When it comes to eradicating corruption, that might be a pipe dream. However, we have found a way, which we think is the only way to fight corruption, starting with the children at three, four years of age, and then teach them integrity in order to fight corruption long term. In fact, I have written a book describing that, uh, how to eradicate poverty, which I have here. This is called Social Entrepreneurship, the Better Globe Way, and that helps the farmer er eradicate poverty. I have also written another book, uh, I don't have it here, but it is called Put Integrity First, which explains how to eradicate corruption. We also publish two magazines. One is called Miti, means uh, trees in Swahili, and it is the tree farmers magazine for Africa. This is also to teach the farmers on the ground how to make more money on trees. Another uh, publishing we do is that we publish a free children's magazine. It is called Bingwa magazine, and it's fighting corruption through building integrity in the children of Africa. And that magazine is a free magazine we give them to schools. And in fact, each magazine is read by approximately 100 children. And my goal is to be able to publish 1 million copies so we can reach 100 million children and eventually that way eradicate corruption in Africa. So Better Globe is here to stay because we have found a better way. So Reno, a fascinating insight. We could talk for hours, but sadly we're out of time. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Glenn.